hi guys how's it going so today actually we're gonna be going through the lowest common ancestor of the deepest leaf so we are told that we're given the root of a binary tree and we need to return the lowest common ancestor of its deepest leaf so we need to recall that the node of a binary tree is a leaf if and only if it has no children right this makes sense the depth of the root of the tree is zero if the depth of the node is d and the depth of each of its children is d plus one right i know this might sound uh very mindful but what they're saying is that uh we need to find the common ancestor of the deepest leaf and for these deepest um leaf we know that their common ancestor is going to be two so that's what we need to do so uh, for you to kind of like have a deep understanding of this problem, I thought it would be a good idea to kind of like walk you through the lowest common ancestor problem, then walk you through the, the how we find the deepest leaves, uh, then then we tackle this problem, then it should be uh, very easy to solve. So what are we going to do is that um, I'm just going to paste this. Uh, tree here so let's say let's say for instance we are told that okay um, we need to find the lowest common ancestor of these values so let's assume that p we're told that is six and we have q we're told that is eight so p is this value here and um, q is this value here so what are the lowest common ancestor of these two values right so what we're going to do is that we're going to have to traverse our tree. So firstly, we're going to start from here. We're going to start from the left, right, you know. So we're going to go, we're going to ask this 3 equals to P or Q. No, it's not. We go to here to 5. Uh, this P equals this 5 equals to P or Q. Nope, it's not. We go here and we find that, okay, 6 is actually equals to P. So we return 6. So here we're going to return 6. Now we go to the right. When we go to the right, we check if 2 equals to P or Q. No, it's not. We go to the left. Uh, we check if 7 is equals to P or Q. is No, it's not. Then we return null because we reached the, uh, the, the, the base case. Then we come the side. We're going to return null also. Then... Um, this is ultimately going to return now because it's now both side but here we have this value on this side and we have this value on the side we have null on the side so what we do is that we choose to return six right we're going to return six here then we go to the right we check if this value is not no it's not we go to the left we check if this value is it matches p or q no it's not then we reach the base case whereby we get null, then we're gonna have to return null, right? Then we go to the right, we find out, oh, okay, base eight. So what do we do on this? We're gonna return eight because we did find that, uh, that value that it matches our Q or P. Then obviously ultimately be between null and the value, we have to choose the value, then we're gonna return eight. So what does this mean? We have values on both sides now. Can you see? We have 8 and 6. So what this means is that this value here, 3, must be the lowest common uh, ancestor. Does this make sense? So this is going to be our LCA, right? So in, from an algorithmic perspective, what we do is that we're going to say if it happens that on the left, if it happens that on the left, uh, left um, is null, right? Is null, then we return right. We take anything that is on the right, right? If it happens, if it happens that the right is none, we're gonna take, um, we return left. It makes sense, right? Um, because this is now then we're going to take this guy else if none of them are now then we return the root bit because this this means that whether 
where, where we have a value on the left side and where we have a value on the right side, that means that value is going to be our lowest common minimum sister. So we're going to have to return the root. Right? So this is essentially the algorithm for finding the lowest common minimum sister. So we're going to write it, but at the high level, this is how it works, right? So uh, while we're still on it, I'd also like to kind of like discuss how we find the depth of the tree while we're still here, right? So because these are the two algorithms that we're going to use to solve the problem, uh, right? So to, to essentially find the depth is that we need to traverse our tree, right? But as we traverse our tree, um, we just need to count, all right? Let's say here we start, we're going to say one, we go to the left, we say two, we go to the left, we go two, uh, we say three, we come back, we go to the right, we say two, we say three again, then we go to the left, we say four, um, we return, then we take the maximum between right and left, right? The max between left and right. Any guy, so you can imagine that the, the max here, this guy, is the, the, the depth is going to be 4, this is going to be 3, so because of this is 3, we're going to take 4, so when we try, we go back, this guy is going to return 4, this guy is going to bring 3, we take 4, ultimately, so we know the depth is here, okay, um, th these are like, um, some of the basic stuff, uh, I think if you're tackling this question, you probably know this, maybe you don't want me to explain it, but, but that's the point. I needed you to understand this. And the reason I needed you to understand those two algorithms is because now, for you now to understand this part, it's going to be much easier. So now you can think of like, they say that we need to go to the, like the deepest, right? We know how to get there. We use the deep, the the deepest leaf algorithm to find the depth of the of the tree, right? Then we say, okay, now that we have this value, right? What is the uh what is the common ancestors of these values here on the deepest? So we're just gonna say, okay, we're gonna look for them the way we kind of like did it here. So our P and Q. Now we don't have a P and Q, but rather our P and Q. It's going to be these deepest leaf. So these are going to be our new P and Q. So that means instead of saying um, uh, uh, if P equals to root or something like that, we just need to use these. Uh, we're gonna say if our current equals to um, the deepest leaf or something like that. If the length equals to the deepest leaf that we did calculate, uh, then we, we just need to find the, the common system, just like that, right? So um, I, I know that I might be confusing you here, but I, I promise you, you're going to understand when we start coding this up. Uh, but that's, that's essentially the idea around this problem. Okay, cool. Um, now let's code this thing up, right? So like I said, the goal now is just to find the depth. Uh, of this tree, then now that we have the depth, what we're going to do is that we're going to traverse this again, but now uh, looking for the lowest common ancestor. And what we're going to do is that we're going to check each, each node. If the length of that node is currently close to the depth, then if it is, then we know that this is the depth and we just have to return um, that root and we, we, we write the algorithm for the lowest common ancestor. But it's kind of like uh, show you, uh, I think let's code this thing up. Then uh, uh, as I'm coding, I'll literally explain it to you. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to traverse this, uh, taking the root, and I'm going to pass in the depth. Right. Um, so I'm just going to check if not root. Uh, what I want to do is that I want to return uh, the depth is going to be our base case then i'm going to say left equals to gfs then i'm going to say root dot left and depth plus one right yes then i'm going to say right equals to gfs uh, root dot right then go to depth plus one then ultimately we return uh, max 
of left and right right so then here i'm just gonna say depth should be equals to dfs i'm just gonna pass in the root and i'm gonna pass in the depth here so yeah but the point that i'm doing here is that i'm saying um take the root and the depth so essentially this algorithm will call itself it's a recursion then it's gonna go to the root dot left so you can think it's starting at three and we say uh three we go in here so depth is gonna be two now we go into five then we're going again to left remember that it keeps on calling itself um then we go to six uh uh then after six we have to go another to left but then we realize that okay we have reached this case right we've reached because of there is no more node then we're gonna return the depth so this depth is gonna return um it's gonna return uh two then we go again to to the right because this is the the the, the right path that we're gonna take we go to two then we just do the same thing um but uh we're gonna return the 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 max uh depth uh of this so for instance we know that there's seven and four those are the depth so that's what we're gonna return here okay so now that we have the depth now i'm just gonna say let's find the lca of the depth uh element right so that's what we want so we're just gonna say current equals to one and i'm just gonna say the df lca and here we're just gonna take in the root and the current. What we want to do is that we wanna say if it happens that current, so current you can think of it as like our um, it kind of like help us to know on which which row or which you know this is like row one, row two, you no, know, we're looking for the depth values, right? So that's what it helps us to 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 find that. So we're gonna say if the current equals to depth. Yes, if the current equals to depth, because we want the lowest current and assist of these guys. So if we are here, if it happens that we're here on the depth, so what we want to do is that we want to return that root. Yes, right. We want to return that root. So now, if if um not root, uh, this is a base case. Then we just want to return none. Um, just like we write the algorithm for LCA. Then we're gonna say left. We call the function to say LCA uh, root dot uh, left. Then we just need to increment our current by one, and we're gonna do the same thing for right and right LCA. And we're gonna say root. Uh, what is it? Root dot right. Then we're gonna say current plus one. Then what we do is that we check if it happens that not left then we wanna return right so um i did explain this part whereby i said that um essentially what you wanna do is that so if this value is gonna return null because you you, you don't take null you take where there is value right let's say um seven four is gonna seven is gonna return Four is gonna return because of these are the depth, right? So you're gonna return a number. It's gonna return, but six is gonna. Let's say you start it here. It's gonna return now because you did not. This is. It was a ten, uh, uh, maybe it was not uh, the 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 depth value, but you you get the point. The, um, so that's that's the point that I'm trying to make here. So if not left, we return right, right? Then we're gonna say L if not right. Uh, we return left so in this case if like we have seven and four uh we have values on both uh side then what we do is that we're gonna return three we're gonna return the root because that means that um that means we are at the lca so uh when i'm done i'm just gonna say lca i'm just gonna take the root and I'm gonna pass in the current, okay? And I'm gonna run this. And it works. So yeah, I think that's all guys um, I have to say. And it's very efficient algorithm. So yeah, I think uh, 
that's all guys uh, have to say uh, so yeah let me know if you enjoyed this one I'll try to create more if you guys like these type of uh, questions or something like that thanks bye